Welcome to Green Time Graham. <laughs> What's that noise? Like? <laughs> oh, it's always something, ain't it? Mm. Like, subscribe. Ignore everything that happened before that. Just like and subscribe. I love us. All right. So we'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, we'll face. We'll get it all in post, folks. Okay. So, I'm going to go through some introductions of the people who are at the bar right now. We've got... <laughs> Hi. We've got... <laughs> Hi. Hey. We've got... Huh? Hi. Hey. We've got... <laughs> me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Saren, Chris, Lisa, and Mark. Yeah, we do. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another episode of 1615, 17 even maybe, nice. of Grimm's Tavern, yes. Tales of Rat. <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of a recap of what we did in the last episode. Yeah. These guys had, right off of the tail end of their victory in the Carnarium of the Gore House, um, done like this big speech and announcement through a thaumaturgy stone mm -hmm. uh, to the entire crowd, kind of appealing to the core essence of the mainstream Rakdos. And it turns out that there are some downsides to believing in utter chaos because she was able to cause it right in the very heart of their stronghold. Mm -hmm. uh, they started turning on each other, a whole bunch of them were cheering for her. She put on a hell of a show as this Rakdos et. Uh, fan art inbound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm definitely drawing some videos yeah. as Raptors. That's going to be so cool. I almost picture it as like a Diablo. Uh, when, right. When she, all oh, of the yeah. seven yes. primeval. Nice. nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so they started going bonkers. They collected their prize money. They were quickly ushered out before they could be overwhelmed and probably literally consumed by their fans. Uh, nice. They went through another Rakdos guild gate. Doors shut. And they went down the vestibule. Uh, the stairway <laughs> uh, that led them to this lovely little um, kind of multi-guild area <laughs> uh, where people from the Simic are allowed to ply their trade in whatever form. You've got Orzov bankers who are able to take advantage of the money kind of flowing <laughs> through the place. Um, and you guys were actually able to find some lodgings, uh, very, very high quality ones, where Soralia... Well, you were keeping watch for the rest of these guys who were eating and sleeping. Decided to betray us. You bumped into good old dad. <laughs> and you switched sides. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Mark! <laughs> go on. I'm furious! Not quite, so. There we go. I'll buy you a pen. Pretty it's pretty dull. I'll be a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, trying to pet at your head. <laughs> so, you had a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart with, uh, with Hewitt, uh, as he mentioned kind of what his goals were for you from the beginning, and that he's been watching you for a little while. Uh, kind of keeping tabs on you for a bit. Um, and yeah, you mentioned that you kind of started to see things from his point of view and you were on board. Totally, yeah. We're best Do buddies it. now. Get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe for high quality D&D &D content, folks. <laughs> Clipping that out for an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. This and... takes gears winding up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So he went his separate way, thinking that you were ultimately with him on, uh, in terms of going forward into eternity together. But that's where we leave off, is with you having spent the night thinking, singing that little Simic advertisement song that you played with that bard outside the shop, um, which I won't do, <laughs> even though it's right here and it's burning me up. But we'll skip through that as it's morning time, uh, but you just know that it's waking time when one of the staff at the area comes by and sees you in the hallway and kind of shakes you a little bit. Good morning. Uh, um, good morning. Um, yeah. So, you seem like you're new here. You just came from the win at the arena, the Carnarium from the Gore House. Yes. So I'm thinking you guys are still on a, on a certain kind of surface schedule. So I just woke you up. Now that you've got your hours of rest in, uh, if you want to go back to sleep, by all means. If you need anything, I'm here. Just let me know. Okay, thank you. All right. Hmm. 
That was rather painless. <laughs> <laughs> the guy. Doo, doo, doo. Morning call. <gasps> Get pulled into the room. <laughs> Door sh- shut. Yes. Big tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You are there in the hallway. It's about time for you guys to get up and at them. I think you have I, things to do. Yeah, I'd be up pretty early. I think I would knock on Tink's door and just apologize. Oh, oh good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I would come no, to the, be the door expecting like, yeah. Andy or someone. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't need any of the staff to actually wake you up. You've acc- acclimatized yourself mm-hmm. because you're on one of your... Your benders. Yeah. And you've been down here for about a week, just nice. like wading through blood crypt after a blood crypt. Little ender bender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to say sorry. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. You didn't hurt me, so. Oh, that's good. Yeah. What, what's your name again? Uh, my the name's Baltic. Baltic. Yeah. Cool. That's a cool name. Yeah, it's. it's ba- ba- uh, ba- oh, don't. It doesn't, don't, doesn't don't. come into a nickname. Sin stalker. Uh, okay, Sin. Oh, you didn't laugh. You didn't laugh. That was good. No, no, no I'm, oh. I'm gonna not laugh this time. I'm Tink. Nice to meet you, Tink. Nice mm-hmm. to meet you. Mm-hmm. Hey. I, uh, I get a little angry sometimes. That's okay. We all do. I get angry and I shock people. So. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Nice but to nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And so you're gonna come and help us. Yeah. Do you, do you normally like go and fight mm. in this area? Do you know it a little bit? Or? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I'm proud of Boros. Do. When I take my oh, yeah, so vacation, the, I this. like to come down and rain blood on those who deserve it. That sounds like a really nice vacation. <laughs> I. I, I normally just, like, go around and have some time, sunbathe a little bit. Have you ever done that? No. <laughs> relax. <laughs> is this like you're relaxing? <laughs> this is how I relax, yes. Nice. It's very relaxing. It's wow. therapeutic. Oh, good. It's like a meditative kind of... Yeah, you know. like, and I just look at the blood and cover it all over you. So, like, yeah, that, that could be meditative. Med- meditative? Yeah. I'm sh- oh, okay. God. Oh, oh. Should oh. we get the other? <laughs> yeah, we should get the rest. And I'll just come out. As you go to leave your room, the other girl kind of throws her triangle on and starts walking oh, and goes, Thank you for helping me with my jetpack. Both, do you have you, you seen have... my jetpack? Uh, no. I made it last night. Uh, it's really cool. Did, um... She had me up all night. My <laughs> fingers are tired. And with the sparks flying everywhere, my tongue is numb. It's an ordeal. I don't get paid enough. <laughs> she just <laughs> like, brushes you. past. <laughs> well, to each their own. And I'll just uh, cr- 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 out the door. <laughs> and I'll knock on the door really loud for Andy. Morning, Tink. <laughs> so, everyone rested? You all yeah. read? A Baltic. You're here again. He's coming yeah. with us. Oh. You don't have to pay me. Coming with us where? Where are we going? I'm going to help you kill people. Well, we have to fight some people, and he does it as therapy. Right. So. Do you even know who we're after? No. He's just <laughs> coming along. Are you yeah. familiar with Hewitt? You are very familiar with yeah. Hewitt. He does that a lot. He's going to like zone out <laughs> into... Like looking off in the distance and snap back. But you may have heard of us. We are the Fungal Four. And we yeah. kind of unintentionally started that riot up in the arena earlier. Yeah, no, I, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah. sorry about yeah. that. But anyways, we're part of the Mids, and we are just trying to stop all these Demir and Rakdos from invading us and just needlessly trying to kill us, really. I appreciate that. So, But it seems that Hewitt is at the head of that, so... Would you be up for helping us? Oh, yeah. Maybe arresting him? Oh, yeah. If he doesn't make it that far, that's okay, too. Yes, if he dies. Arresting is... He'd be fine with that as well, yeah. but I think our friend, uh, who is quite a bit sleepy now... Hey. Hmm? I'm not a bit sleepy. I drink all of that stuff. I feel real good. <laughs> what did you say exactly? He'd be cleaning the latrines, is what you want to do? Yes, <laughs> that is what I would like to what? see. What? Oh, that that guy that we're trying to get, 
It is my dad. Her dad. He's a that's, dick. He's that's a douche. That's why she's trying to kill He's him. a dick douche. Like, mm-hmm. she could kill him. Oh. Yeah. You know Hewitt has taken particular pleasure in watching your more recent fights. Mm-hmm. And it has not escaped you that the demons you've been fighting lately all look like ones that you have slain before. Hmm. He Hewitt is spending mm-hmm. extra money to have you literally fight a demon that you've killed months ago, and it's that exact demon mm. reborn months later, and he keeps putting your old things in the arena with you. Okay. And the so more I make serious, no progress. He's exactly. <laughs> he's pretty much laughing at Sisyphus. He's just cackling and just... Oh! The more seriously you take it, the more he just spends and spends. In fact, he's the guy who's actually been funding your latest bender. And now that he's gotten bored with you, that's the reason why that your money is running out. Oh. He's the one, he's the only one who's really paying enough money to keep you down here. <clears throat> you don't really like him. I don't <laughs> like that guy. He tends to um, spend a lot of time and effort and money entertaining himself at the expense of others. Yes. I don't it seems a lot of people here would be doing that. Hmm. Mm, yeah. I suggest we focus on this common goal. Yes. That's agreeable. Mm-hmm. We could use the help for certain. Mm. And you Definitely. seem like a strong fellow. Mm. <laughs> so, he came to visit me last night. What? What? Why didn't you wake us what? up? <laughs> we could have ended him right here. Uh, I really don't think we can end him. I could end him. <laughs> uh, what even, are we doing here? He is 800 years old. Then what are we doing here if not to end him? Maybe I couldn't end him, but I want to. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Isn't that place meant to protect us? No, look for my pamphlet. We're supposed to arrest him. I, I don't have it all figured out, but I, he thinks that I'm on his side now. So Seems I like can... you are. He came in here right, right here alone, and you did nothing. I talked to him. And I made sure did you he find does out not anything? kill you. Anything we can use against him? You know where he's meeting his his backers. You know where he will be th- during this night. Because oh, like the, the entertainment event? you guys event? would have no lead to follow. You guys would just be wandering around yeah. deep in Rakdos territory looking for this guy. Mm-hmm. You know which building he's going to be at, when, who he's meeting, why he's meeting them there. He is meeting with the people he is hoping to get on side to quadruple the size of his army. Mm. See, I know all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh All right. God. History check. Nat twenty. <laughs> Boom. Where did he oh. say? Where? He was going next. Right, where did he it? say? The there is a blood crypt. That's where the blood crypt. On the festival grounds um, okay. that he kind of told her to go. It's near to the broken toy house, uh, toy box, which is where he has a permanent room set aside Sorry. for himself. Have you ever been to the blood crypt? I'd prefer you call me. Baltic, Baltic. Oh, the sin stalker, calling me the thing that I stalk. <laughs> oh, As sorry. Just sin. sin. <laughs> stalker. That oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's all one Baltic. word, almost. Okay. Oh, it's Baltic, yes. Baltic. Yes, Baltic. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to make a nickname for you. It's really hard. I like Baltic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. What a grip. You're so bad. Blanky. blanky. Remember the blank. I was getting blanky. mad. <laughs> Ooh, so, have you ever been to the hmm? She's mentioned that he has a, a permanent residence at this broken toy box, so maybe we don't need to go into this blood crypt where I'm sure there will be a sale by all kinds of things. Maybe we just wait for him at his residence. I want to go to the blood crypt. <laughs> well, it seems that he just puts things in front of you for you to kill needlessly and just to make you angry and finds joy in that anger. And if I don't do it, I don't make progress. And he has stood in my way, making that progress. And now it seems he's finally out of the way. He won't be expecting me to continue doing what I'm doing. But if we meet him there, he will have a lot of friends. Yeah. That's the point. Meet him at the crypt, the blood crypt? If you meet him at the blood crypt, you're meeting him in the middle of a business meeting with his friends. Mm -hmm. So you can push the envelope and count on peer pressure. Whereas if yeah. you catch him at his stronghold, 
odds are he's either going to be safe exactly where he is, or he'll run. And last time he controlled you very easily, Andy. Like, and I'll point to your scars on your face. Remember? Mm. That was very scary. <coughs> he's very I powerful. I won't let that happen I know, but again. I don't, I don't you think you will have a choice. So we meet him in this blood crib. Yes. Surrounded by his allies, and we'll have to face monsters in there. No, no, no. I think we continue moving forward. We fight in the blood crypt, which is what I'm quite passionate about, if you don't mind. And I think publicly, if we could at some point get him involved, I think he is a showman for sure. He likes the attention and yeah, he does. publicity. If we find him uh, alone or surrounded by his friends, I I don't think he would be too inclined to participate. But if we get him publicly, there would be quite a bit of shame in backing out. So say we, we call him out for a fight, see if uh, he has the he... balls to stand up against the Fungal Four, including Baltic. Yeah. Thank you. The Sin Stalker. The bold Sin Stalker. Okay, we're going somewhere weird with it. But yes. <laughs> we can do this. Clearly you know how to be in a battle, how mm. to guide people, make us strong. Mm. And I'll just stand next to Baltic, trying to look like Baltic. <laughs> I kinda <laughs> go my tiny little self. I'll do one of those and have the wings pop out a little bit. Oh <laughs> that's so cool. I'm gonna have my like jetpack. <laughs> just dancing. <laughs> I can fly too. I can't. I can't fly. I can't fly. Oh, that! I can make you fly. I can touch you. And oh, make or you fly. we don't do that either. I don't. I don't like heights. I just. Oh. Dad's okay. In emergencies, I might make you, you sure fly. You sure that thing on your back's gonna work? It should. I've seen what you've built before. But this lady helped me. And that looks very explosive. She was really good, though. She yeah. helped me all night long. She stayed. I up saw like who walked out of your room. Yes. Yeah. The, she was really the good. The prostitute helped you. <laughs> She was a nice lady. I'm sure that's kind of what she gets paid for, yeah. Yeah, but I needed a jetpack, and she was there, it and I needed very good. extra hands. All right. So look, it's so cool, and I can even like change the power to be able to touch you, and then you'll be floating and flying. Really? That's really cool. Yeah. As she shows off her jetpack, you can see that some of that lady's fingerprints have been burned onto the metal. <laughs> 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 She'll do anything for a silver. Anything you say. Mm -hmm. You just you know how to build a jetpack. I just have to well, believe. Be willing. <laughs> you can believe what you really. want. Yeah, well, I'll maybe try it on someone else first. Let's see how they do. I don't want to be your guinea pig. But this. haven't got it that many times. I'm not gonna be using it that much. But why don't we? I wouldn't mind. Use fine. it to move forward. Yeah. Why don't we try that? I'm not using a spell slot just to like. I think you just. I mean, let's just keep going. Oh, <laughs> that okay? Yeah, I'm gonna just be like running down the hallway with my jetpack. Awesome! <laughs> I have bones to crush. Yes. Very good. I like him. <laughs> I like me too. He's oh yeah. <laughs> so you guys get into the Arcano lift. You're brought down to the lobby of this fortress inn, um, passed by the front desk, and she thanks you for your patronage. Ne next time we come here, can you yes. make sure you don't tell people where we are? Um, if they ask. Sorry, um, unless you become a customer of a certain value, and that value, I, I'm telling you, oh. upfront is extraordinarily large, um, I don't quite have to listen to you. Um, there is a man who pays a good sum of money very re regularly, and so he has certain privileges. Awesome. Um, your privacy is not among them. So, Hello. thank you. <laughs> Please do come again. <laughs> she waves pleasantly. <laughs> Just, I'll sell you out for any amount of money. <laughs> you mean nothing to me. <laughs> okay, so you guys are gathered up, uh, leaving the lobby, <laughs> and you go back out onto those cobbled streets of this kind of... Uh, very multicultural area for it being kind of nestled out of sight and out of mind in between two very crazy 
uh, Rakdos areas. You've got Simic and stuff around here with their businesses in the Orzhov, with their banks and all that. Um, yeah, life is actually somewhat-ish normal. Uh, thrives on trade and all that stuff. So you guys walk out into the middle of something that's a little bit calmer than what you came from and much calmer than what you're going to. Um, yeah, if we're looking at... Oh, ho, ho, I actually have some things that I can show you guys. Yay! So, if I go like this... Hey, I see it. Oh! oh. Hey. I don't... Ah, there Rectos we go. Now they can see it, too. And this... Rectos. Yeah, this was the Rakdos Guild Gate that you guys walked through on your way down the Demon's Throat at its very entrance that was the fortified one. So you guys have moved past that and are actually in a place that looks like this. Don't see that. Oh, now we have to click off of that. Mm. Oh. Do you see the... <laughs> Can you just show it again? Oh, yeah! Bam! Yeah, we see oh, it! Yeah, good. <laughs> So oh, scary. Oh my lord. <laughs> Gotta love <Good>. technology. <laughs> you um, just work and understand. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, what? Uh, anyway, oh, they yeah. see things. And then you guys move from those things that you see with your eyes, as I describe, <laughs> forward to a different place with different things to see. <laughs> I am going to click on it for the good of the people watching the Perfect. episode so that they can see the sure. visual. To you, I will describe it with uh, the vibration of my vocal cords and nothing more. <laughs> That's not it. My lord. Where are you, you goober? Remember, remember last year? Picture's not there. Love you, Calvin. Remember, remember last year when we were like, guys, we gotta make the goal to like, go live. This is gonna be so much easier. It's so smooth. Like, if we were going live, I'd have an excuse. Yeah, that's right. I don't have that, so this is fun. Instead, you guys leave the very surprisingly mundane life of these people who live in the shadow of Rakdos uh, down the rest of the stairwells until you get to yet another massive cavern. This one is filled Ooh. with magma and lava, and it's I pouring down it in and pillars from the ceiling, uh, and there is one gigantic stalactite, but out of it has been carved windows, balconies, pillars. Nice. It is a building, a veritable palace that has been carved out of this, and a lot of the windows are in grimacing skull eyes. People have entire rooms that you can see through the mouths of these screaming things, lava pooling between, the pe uh, between their teeth or out of their eyepieces. And this is Rick's Madi. The Dungeon Palace. Ooh. Dang it! <laughs> if you go into Chrome and do it, we'll see it. Oh, yes. If you want it. I hope that these guys can. That's right. <laughs> um, right. Well, I've described it to you. And you guys see Rixmati, the Dungeon Palace. Mm. And there are these uh, like spindly bridges that are kind of crossing the tunnels that come down into other places in this cavern that uh, are over top of this lake of lava. And they have no supports to them at all. Some kind of magic. And you can't be sure how often the Rakdos actually maintain much of anything around here. You can see that there are people in carts and things moving, yeah, <laughs> moving along these bridges. And you guys have to move along one of them as well. So you guys step onto the bridge and start to go across. There are... Uh, you can see that a great deal of the magic around this bridge is mostly for show. Mm -hmm. As there are these like fonts of lava kind of spraying like other theme parks would have waterworks. Yeah. This one has like shots of lava going over the bridge or like cascading in waves and oh. stuff. And, it's like uh, Bellagio. Yeah. If you, uh, if you stand in just the right places, just like you can get splashed by a little bit of water, there are some people who are walking or they have... Take uh, back up. Back, back, <laughs> away from the edge. <laughs> Someone is putting out a fire on like a wagon of produce and stuff that they're bringing to the dungeon palace to resupply it. Um, is, is Baltic wearing trousers? Or just a got armor. tunic -y. He's a metal floor-to-ceiling kind of guy. Cool. I'm going to walk between his legs then. <laughs> Cause I'm yeah. like I'm like free foot and a bit. It's like how those 
police with a dog, like, walk with the dogs kind of straddle between their legs. Yeah, he's not walking like he got off a horse. But, like, his stride is long. He can go, like, in between his legs, I guess, if you want to do. He'd let you, but it'd be weird. Just just so I don't get splattered with any lava. Oh, he'll basically. just he'll just keep you on. Like, he'll stay near the lava and keep him the side. Oh, good. That's and good. don't mind whatever's tinking you on the head. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Awesome. So you guys cross this bridge with all kinds of other people going back and forth. A lot of them injured. Some of the injured people, surprisingly, are seem to be having a hell of a good time. <laughs> uh, but you guys get to the other side where there is this massive courtyard. And the scale of the Dungeon Palace really strikes you when you're walking across that bridge for like a good 20 minutes or so. Oh. Because at first you see it in the distance, you go, oh, all right. <laughs> the longer it takes you to get there, you start to see that the buildings that are in front of it and outside of it start to take shape. And then you guys are back on solid ground uh, in the shadow of the Dungeon Palace itself on what is called the Festival Grounds. Mm -hmm. Right at the entrance, you can see that there is this expansive building called the Broken Toy Box. And it's not called that. It just has a... Um, its house. symbol is just this almost jack-in-a-box, but instead of a springed jester coming out, it is a woman. Mm. Um, but the woman's neck is at a very strange angle ah. as she's draped kind of over the corner, over the lip of the box. Um, nice. So, yeah, you know that that is where um, Hewitt has a permanent kind of residence there, permanent booking, and right next to it is... Uh, a place that is alive with a hell of a lot of activity. You can see that there are people paying a great deal of money, people who have entourages, uh, very well, high up people, a lot of Orzov here, uh, even some, uh, yeah, you can see that there are some Debir operatives who clearly aren't on some kind of assignment, mm -hmm. but are using some of their money to, to go and spy on what's going on behind these closed doors. Uh, that, just from the sounds that are coming through, sounds of fighting, screaming, tearing, laughing and jeering, uh, it's like a more private, high-end carnarium. Hmm. And you nice. can tell that there are things in cages being brought around the side and people haggling over prices for them. <laughs> like, you know how many people died to get this demon here? It's like, yeah, that, that, that's a... You need to get better people. I'm not paying more than this. So yeah. they're, they're like haggling over all the different things that they're putting down these ramps to like fuel all of the blood, all yeah, of yeah. the blood sport. Um, that is the one that you normally go to. Okay. The one closest to the entrance. Um, and that's the one where um, Hewitt has actually been uh, laughing at you and kind of mm. throwing your, your zeal back in your own face. So. A jerk. Hey, that guy. Such a dick. As you guys walk out onto the street and look around a little bit, you see, wondering what to do, someone walk out of the broken toy box and just sauntering rather casually over towards that blood grip. Ah. And he strikes you as a, as the man you're looking for. <laughs> Human oh. is actually just walking from the one oh. building to the other. And he's skipping the line. As there he's he is. About to Do we get attack? Do we get him? Or not now. Why? He'll leave if we do it now. Ow. He shows a little Rakdos locket. And the person goes, come on in. And he walks through the doors. <sighs> Does, he didn't even know you were there. He just opened it. And off he goes. Let's go after him. Uh, I'm going to go. Well, I'm here to fight. Go? Yeah, let's go fight. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right, so you guys get into this line, and as you're looking at the line of people who are there, you can tell that almost every one of these people is a step above the common carnarium goer. Uh, those people were, were dressed up in crazy little costumes and things like that. Uh, they were kind of the common man and rabble of Ravnica. This is a is another tier of society altogether that can afford these more private, uh, elaborate shows. Um, so you guys get in that line feeling very, very out of place, and one of the guards at the front actually sees you guys waiting there and just 
steps over, walks to you guys. It's a kind of Vyashino, except where a lot of the ones that you commonly see are very, very whip thin, and this one's kind of has jowls to it, large scales, kind of bone spurs coming off of its face. Uh, you actually reckon, oh, you're Boros. Mm-hmm. This is a defector. Oh. There are mm. shock troopers called uh, Vyashino First Blades, and um, this guy seems to have once been part of your your organization and has probably dropped out at some point because he's found a better paying, easier job. Mm. So it's not bad terms, you know, that kind of honorable, dishonorable, this could be either kind of deal? Or is it usually a shitty kind of... Yeah. He, okay. He probably, Fair enough. He probably left for a better paying job, but either way, going from Boros to Rakdos is a yeah. hell of a switch. Mm-hmm. Either way, he comes up to you and... So, I think you might have the wrong idea. Standing here, you don't look like the kind to watch. Like the kind who can afford to stay and see what we've got on offer. I'm going to point at the other door that I usually go through when I'm fighting. I'll be like, uh, we're going that way. Then why didn't you? Oh. Mm. He mm. kind of recognizes you as you point. At first he sasses you and then he's... Mm. Just came to say... Hey. Hey. <laughs> Just... That away. And then I'll walk away. <laughs> he kind of turns back and yeah. hisses at the fr- person in the front of the line. You guys are actually led through a, a back door where there, there's no line. Ah. There is not really a whole <laughs> lot of people who volunteer to fight to... in the blood crypts. Because yep. <laughs> your odds of survival are much less. The payouts are much, are very high. <laughs> Me again. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so you are immediately accepted through. They recognize a normal face. They see that you've brought some people with you. They start going, you know, um, the more people you have, the bigger the demons. The yeah. more of them. Good. Next time I'll bring more people. Great. All right. Hopefully uh, they're of the same quality as you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you give them a good show. Uh, you get your normal cut. <laughs> so he kind of... Uh, pencils you guys in. Mm-hmm. He sees what he has. He's kind of looking and there are just so many things trapped in this like holding area. Everything is rattling. Everything is shaking and jangling. Cages. They are things that don't tire of infinite rage. <laughs> that just are incessantly making noise. And you're like, eh, don't let it throw you off your game, eh? In you go. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, you guys are allowed kind of into the... What creatures do we see in these cages? Hmm. You are not particularly familiar with a lot of Rakdosian demons and creatures of that nature. Uh, oh, nice. you! Uh, well, you see that there is one that is like a, almost like a great bloated toad with these like sharp fangs and his, his face, his chubby cheeks almost come into a beak and he has these horns that come off in a, in a large kind of bunch of antlers, uh, that, you are aware, mm-hmm. is called a Sire of Insanity. Oh. Um, its cage is heavily, heavily warded because merely being near this thing drives people utterly mad. In fact, uh, when it comes to um, recruiting new membership, when the number of Rakdosian cultists Ooh. starts to wax or, or wane low, they send these things out to pretty much baptize new inductees mm. with a blank slate. Yeah. They empty their mind. <laughs> How big is this thing? It is very big. It is uh, like a large creature. Ooh. Oh, yep, you, <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> Yes. Stare back. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. is there like any tricks to fighting these things? So, if you get close to it, it can have more of a fearful effect on you, or is it just being within its presence at all? Merely being like being within about ten feet of the creature uh, starts to wreak havoc on your mm. senses. Oh. Uh, things just stop making sense. They, okay. it's highly hallucin- hallucinogenic oh, okay. and almost illusory in nature. Yeah. You, you stop, you really lose control. Okay. Uh, effectively. I'll, I'll, also, I'm just going to tell Martin, yeah, so I'll just... Yeah, don't, uh, don't get too close. Don't get too close. You can do some ranged. If you feel yourself getting a little, uh, little loopy, I would take a step back and reassess, because it's one way to get yourself killed. All 
entertaining. Actually, some very good information. Yeah, you guys, as you're standing there, also see that guy with the four of you go, eh, fetch that one over there, yeah? <laughs> he kind of points over to a couple. Yeah. Uh, you can see that there's a skeleton creature in one. It's limbs have kind of been replaced with weapons, blades, a massive kind of spiked mace on the other end. It's just seething with like fire from within itself. And it's got still bits of skin and limbs and gores plastered about Sweet. it. Uh, you recognize that as a carnage gladiator. Nice. Um, every once in a while, they use those up atop in the carnariums. Um, but you know that the, the blood crypts them being more private affairs, they're also a smaller arena. Mm -hmm. And so these things can actually wreak a lot of havoc within a confined space. So you see a carnage gladiator there, but you lose it when when that guy goes, and uh, that one on standby. Just standby though. <laughs> it just points to a cage about this big. <laughs> and it has this little insectoid looking thing. It's got these two mandibles and this kind of wide, disc-like head and it's, it looks red and like a crab? and spiky kind of like a shell creature of some type yeah oh okay um it is not what it appears to be yeah you know that it is in that cage and it's only in a cage that small because right now it cannot see mm. if it could see the people that are near it you know that it takes on a whole different aspect it's what's called a dread slag it uh it is comprised of people's phobias. Everyone around it, it kind of feeds on fear. So it's going to That's turn cool. into a hot lady for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So that's kind of what's Slag. in store for you guys, as you guys are led to, honestly, what amounts to a waiting room, where you guys are kept in decent comfort, and there are people who even offer to clean your weapons, sharpen them. Um, they offer to fix any dents, nicks, um, damage to your armor and gear. They actually want you guys to put on a good show. Um, nice. If they just wanted to watch people walk in and die uh, funnily, instantly, with no show of skill, that's carnarium crap. Yeah. That's what those people eat up. That's what the route... They want to see skill. They want to see people who have trained their entire lives with the blade put it all on the line, moment by moment. And so these guys, they want to take good care of you. You nice. guys are sat in a waiting room in the basement. They can fluff fluff up my sheep costume a bit. <laughs> You're still <laughs> wearing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's costume. still wearing it. That's it's so good. And then Gaston will come out and trim my mushrooms as he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm okay. going to put on my mage armor now as we're in the waiting room mm -hmm. and just ask them to like shine at my <sighs> museum rig thing. All right. Yeah, they... Uh, they shine it up. They even have, like, a resident, is it, like, Statocaster oh, on hand? Cool. Some, some uh, like, engineer? Uh, so some little goblin actually so looks over your staff. He's like, no, this won't do. No, <laughs> it's <laughs> all wrong. Sticker. <laughs> I, I know. I put it on my... No. <laughs> <laughs> I, put, I found those things. Don't take her stickers. I find lots of horse shit on the road. I don't attach it to my clothes. <laughs> so he throws it on the ground and just <laughs> starts pulling the through parts. The and put it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he starts swapping out like wooden parts, nice. <laughs> things that are different. He starts, uh, he actually helps kind of fine tune your rig, makes it look a yeah, lot more yeah. professional. Nice. Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Andy, can I Thanks. tell that you deal with like poisons and fungus and stuff like that like in your well, sheep I'm, costume like i don't know my how... whole arm i might still wearing my armor and everything so, so okay so still so poking ass. Okay. actually so she'd wear um, armor as well i might and i got a big mushroom with a okay <laughs> i didn't know how much the sheep costume might like, covered so stack. yeah so if we're waiting then i might actually see if you uh you know do you uh, do you have any poisons no. Anything. I don't have anything prepared. Everything I try to make something, it blows up in my face. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I brought you. <laughs> we brought you. Blows up in my face. Yeah. That's right. You let me bring you by being available to come because I couldn't do it on my own. Yeah, but I, I paid for your room. So. Yeah. Yeah, you let me come. Thank you're, you. you're in debt to me. Oh, so protect that weird, me. That, oh, okay. Just protect me, and okay. then it'll be deal. Like okay. even. Okay. I was gonna do that anyway. Good. Okay. 
I just need you to definitely protect me. Yeah, no, we've covered that. That's good. good. <laughs> but tell you what, you can have this if you want. What is it? And I'll reach into my dirty old moldy bag and give him some adhelamelium mushroom. Mm. And you have to, like, rip it from my hands. It's so <laughs> sticky. Oh. What does it do? Whatever you want. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> what is... <laughs> there you go. You're one of us now, the fungal four. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you were to cut it into small pieces, you could chew on it as a distraction. Nice. That would be bubble bump, which is the gum. Oh, that's right. You don't oh, want to chew on this. No. <laughs> it's yeah. Super adhesive. Yes. Sitting there for now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. So you guys are yeah, sitting do. down there for. About an hour, long enough to get a short rest anyway, um, until something a little interesting happens where uh, the man who kind of led you in goes, yeah, uh, right this way, boss, uh, go on in. And he kind of points at a, another man who appears in the doorway to your waiting room, uh, covered in like a bit of a spackling of blood, and he just, huh. His chest is kind of heaving. You can see he's got a little bit of vim and vigor in him. He's got this like ever like this most the most attractive amount of sweat that someone can have. <laughs> As he just stands there with his kind of weapon out, just standing in the doorway. Ha! Huh, there you are. <laughs> I didn't think you'd be so up and at him about the whole thing. I, you're really here, nice and early. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Ray, the meeting is in for a while, dear. <laughs> uh, clean this off. And he throws the, the sword at the guy, and he just uh, grabs it, cuts his hands on it, and starts cleaning it. <sighs> All right. Ooh. Eh, we can do better. Why don't you join me upstairs? Hmm? Okay. okay. All right. Let's so, go. yeah, he, uh, he beckons you to come with him, and he goes, you can sit in a place that um, is a little bit nicer. They'll give you refreshments and stuff. I'm going to clean up, and then we'll talk about this little thing you have planned for us. <laughs> these are the okay. these are the friends from yes, before. Yes, these are I, my friends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're down the one though. Uh, though it you didn't seem very close. The the one that poofed. <laughs> oh. He was supposed to go up against a Drake, and I was just. Mm, that's a little small. Well, yes, we've got a new one now. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. He seems quite capable. So. You know he is. He's so capable. Mm. You do kill them very, very efficiently. If only there weren't an infinite supply. <laughs> Enjoy your last that's night here. Like All right. Well, who's going to make it my last night? You? Yes. From where and how? You'll see. Mm. No. Uh, you, you know how you could pick out of a crowd a man who's been kicked too hard in the head by a mule? I'm looking at him. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, was alright to jump on the back of my own, because I was going to say, I can tell yeah. from a mile away you're only half worthwhile of something. My little mutt friend comes up to you and looks real close, grabs your face, looks at the one side and the other. Ugh, these little things. My spores attack them. Oh. I'm so defensive. They just... All right. They just go. He has to do a con save? Yep. I will ready my weapon. What's the DC? 14? It was, yeah. Because he's rolled a 15. Did you level up and do a thing? Did a thing happen to make it harder? Reaction. You do, do. Hit a spores. Yeah, con save. 14. Yeah, so he looks your face one side mm. to the other. You kind of explode with spores and you just... Breathe them in. Mm. It's properly earthy. <laughs> it's very fitting. Oh, yeah? Stands oh, up. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he turns around. No? <laughs> oh, and he starts to Eddie, walk out okay. the room. It's okay, wait. Wait, Eddie, wait. Don't want you hurting yourself again. Right. How does anyone like this thing? Are we knowing that Hewitt is that well in the situation, pretty well and stuff, being regular? Um, would it seem like this is the sort of environment that he wouldn't turn down the opportunity while we're in the doorway and some of the people that he, I'm assuming, pays to kind of be nice to him and give him those privileges are watching. 
Yeah. Before we get into the fight, could we make this fight one if we... Uh... If you tried to jump no, in... N- yeah, like knowing his personality, would he like disappear or would he stick it out? Can he disappear? Why would we know that? Well, um, not disappear, but just, like, refuse yeah. to fight. Be like, I don't need this shit. And I don't then, you need know. him to fight. I need him to die. <laughs> so, odds are, you could fight him here. You could start a fight. He would do what he could. And if he felt like things were out of hand, he would try to get away. And you you know that um, a lot of people bend and scrape to not just Hewitt, but people like him. These ancient, cruel kind of demons who barely see value in anything and who have been like who are like pillars of Rakdos uh, which is saying something considering how unstable the entire edifice of the guild is those things that stick around for a long time just like that crazy old coot lady Mm -hmm. um, they are so dangerous that they deserve a certain amount of respect Mm. Um, you could pick a fight with him here as soon as he thinks it's no longer fun he could have Things the people around him actually join the fight on but his But if side. he's public in the middle of a ring, it would look really bad. If you make him agree him. to terms, yeah. well, then he can't really ignore those terms without looking like, like a, a bitch. Okay, but if cool, you yeah. jump him in his own club after he's done a okay. fight... Fair enough. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So he turns Not and <laughs> starts to walk away. Ray, come on, little one. Okay, I'm a different game now. <laughs> what, you're going with him? I thought you were a... F- What's going on? Yeah, I thought you were on I us. No. Oh, sorry, not on us. <laughs> <laughs> not that I want you to be on us. Mm-hmm. Calm down. I'll be back. <laughs> Rake, what's taking so long? What are you all talking about? So we're about to have a crazy fight where we might not survive, and you're just gonna back out and go with him? I thought you were our friend. Uh, I just give me. One minute to speak with Mother my father. Mother did warn me about you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Traitor. I've kind of made her past the need for friends, I think. I weaned her off that weakness from a very young age. I don't Weaned you off existence. Clearly you don't have friends. Mm. I've got plenty, and I've got better. I bet you just pay Everybody them. calm down. Let me no, just go talk away. to my dad for a minute, okay? Mm. By the way... You little fart. <laughs> kind of leans into you. I, when I was a performer at the toy box, was the highlight of millennia long creatures' lifespans. You, you were entertainment. Yes. We're all entertainment. You've come to a place where people turn their deaths to entertainment, you silly little thing. In a world where everything's a show and everything's a stage, the best thing you can be is the best actor around. So play your little bit part. I'll be back for you. Oh, you're gonna die really well. Come on, Rake. Turns and leaves. (laughs) I will go just up beside him, and as he's walking, I'll talk to him. Mm. And Ah, say... Before you go... I thought you were one of us. I am one of you. Then what are you doing? I told you that when I talked to him last night, I'm acting like I am on his side to get information to help us defeat him. Alright. Just don't forget that. Don't let his words, his supposed charm, his charm does get not to work you. on me. <laughs> or we're all dead doesn't work on you either. (laughs) From down the hall he goes, Rake! I am not accustomed to waiting. (laughs) He just squeals out. I'm going to make him wait for like another 30 seconds. Let's just say we're saying something important. (laughs) Alright, here, take this as well. And I'll subtly pass her that super concentrate hallucinogenic. If you feel there's a time to use it. She takes it right away. <laughs> Was way better. No. <laughs> so you go to join up with him? Mm-hmm. All right. So you're walking alongside him as he kind of 
knows a lot of the people who are working around here, and they just kind of nod as they let him walk upstairs through a few doors until he gets to go into a little room, and servants are already there, waiting towels. There's a kind of bath already poured for him. The water's steaming and aromatic. Uh, you can see that there are, like, chaise lounges all over the place that you can, you know, um, feel free to settle in anyone. But first... You are going to have to learn that there are some people you need to hop to when they tell you to do things, Rake. You need to learn how to pick your battles. It's a father's duty to tell you how to do it. I thought you had learned your lesson, but I'm going to need you to turn around and bend over. Rake. No. We should have fought him. Oh, we should have fought him so good. He puts a hand on your head and starts to turn you. Does one more lash. <laughs> yeah. And you see that he is not going to give you a spanking. He rather moves your, like, dress, the back of your dress, because it's that kind of nice, revealing, fancy one that you got. Mm -hmm. You hear, like, his claws kind of come out and take on a more demonic form. You know, you have to know, Rake, that there are some people you can't piss off. This is going to help you. It'll get you to that 500 mark. <laughs> and you claws along your back. The ones. And you go, that was for making me wait. There has to be another. You need to be on your toes. If you're going to be one of those people that people listen to and fear and respect, you have to have a sharper tongue. You have to be wittier, dear. Remember this and get those mental juices flowing. Come up with one-liners for those little people that were around you. And he claws down your back again, kind of along your ribs. And you go, ah, you can close your dress back up. I need to get you out of my fingernails. Good thing I've got that bath ready. And he starts to take his kind of things off and he settles down into the water with the rest of the servants kind of cleaning his nails. Jesus. <sighs> All right, Rake, if you need a potion, you can heal it back up, but um, you needed to know. Anyway, um, I think it will just bleed. That is fine. I deserve this. <sighs> he settles back and there's hope for her. There's hope for her. She's promising. And he's saying this to the servants. We're like, oh, very promising, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rake, um... What are your friends even doing here? I thought you and I were going to my meeting. I didn't expect you to bring vagabonds. Well, I thought it would be quite fun to keep up the charade, you see. Keep up the charade? With my friends. Hmm. hmm. Tag along, I thought. I would fight with them today and would maybe challenge you to a fight later. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Rake, stop talking. <laughs> I'm thinking. Oh, my lord, I have thought of it. Rake, you are an inspiration. You're my muse, it seems. My little missing piece. You really are my daughter. Okay, so, I'm going to send you back to your friends. Don't drink the potion. That'll be good. It'll look like I'm upset. You stick with them. All right, I am meeting with some important people, and they are going to want a great deal from me. Uh, probably more than I can actually afford to pay. I've been around for a long time, so that should tell you just how high the price of their aid is. Um, so, in order to cheapen their aid, I'm going to put it up in the air as to whether they'll actually end up having to pay it. You go with your friends. The charade will be to join them. You call me out as a challenge. And how about this? The wager is that if I win against your motley group, should you survive, and I won't let them kill you, dear. Uh, maim you at the very worst. I'll step in or something if, if the maiming gets too much for you. Um, so, if your friends survive, I challenge them, and if I win, I get their aid. That little bit of uncertainty will actually knock the price down to something that I can afford. And, little do they know, but I have that person on the inside. So when we do the battle, all of a sudden, bloop, 
you stand side by side with your old man and we cut them apart and put them down and voila, we gain our army for a discounted price and then we roll it over the mitts. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. He stands up, kind of shakes himself off, um, steps out of the bath and starts to hold him. He almost takes on like a messianic like pose as the <laughs> tea pose. <laughs> yeah. As they start to dress him up in front of you and he goes, "All right. So, uh, you've received an actual scolding, so make it convincing. No. This is where that wit is going to come into play. You got to sell them on it. Yeah? Can you do that? I can do that. Good. All right. So, go and see your friends. Tell them Daddy's not a nice man. <laughs> you know, those half-truths make the best lies. They do. <laughs> then, little do they know that we've actually arranged a little deal of our own. Good? It's going to be perfect. Good. Give Daddy a hug. <laughs> he hugs you, and you can see that when his hands touch your back, he almost makes it a point to touch each of the X scratches that he's inflicted, and he just gives you that pat-pat. That's my girl. Oh, and your horns, they're just coming in. They'll get so much bigger and scary. Look at that. <laughs> Carry on now. Go, 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 go. Do you need anything to eat before you go? I will take a handful of grapes as I leave. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Ta-ta, I'll see you in the games. The show uh, happens. <laughs> uh, in a couple hours, so entertain yourselves and, until then, all right? Okay. Good girl. All right. Which one of you is going to join me? <laughs> he just kind of looks at the bunch of them. Mm, they're all very plain. No. <laughs> so he kind of <laughs> picks up the black card. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and you are dismissed from the room. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so you're coming back to us then? Yeah. Oh, okay. you took a certain amount of damage, yeah. actually. I did. So, they're D4s because he has claws for hands and his strength on fire. So, oh, he actually does care about you. They were both ones. So you take four damage on each, so that's eight slashing damage. That's what love feels like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it hurts. He's such a good dad. Yeah. Very okay. Very gullible. <laughs> Or is he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you were where are we? We're still waiting for a couple hours, right? Yeah. Okay, so she knows where to find us. It's not gonna happen on a dime. Like you guys want to be the entertainment for the one where he's actually gonna be in the arena meeting with these people. You're kind of fitting into their schedule. There are other people who are fighting in there and other entertainments that are going on in the blood crypt, so you have to wait a little bit. But she'll join you guys in the waiting area I hope and she's then okay. We'll fast track through unless you guys have anything that you want to go out and shop for or look for in that couple of hours. I will, when uh, she comes back and kind of gives us the rundown on what's going on, I'm going to stop her after we get just enough information to know what's up and then I'll just say we shouldn't talk about it anymore. He pays a lot of people. There are a lot of eyes and ears and stuff around. And as soon as she starts coming back, I'm going to pull her head really close to my ear so that it's like, I'm going to be like, quiet, you know. And we'll talk in like a little tiny group. Yeah. And I'll just make sure that they know how to keep their voices down. Mm -hmm. A lot of hand Don't gestures for missing that. words. The uh, door that they open to let Zeralia in, you can see kind of closed, but is still ajar. So you can kind of <laughs> give it a back kick with your hoof to. <laughs> Ow! Fuck! <laughs> no, I think I'll leave it open. Oh. And during our whisper talk, I'll say some things louder than others intentionally, but have them be kind of on the other side of things. Like, he is a bastard. And that kind of thing, just to make it more, uh, you know what I mean? All right. Um, this, I think, is where the performance and the deception part of things is going <laughs> to come into play. So, are you guys are having like a, like like a, a huddle. secret conversation, yeah. Yeah. but then making it seem like something else is going on? Yeah. I mean, if we're talking crap about this guy and planning what he is planning, his eyes and ears, like, I'm... It's not something I'd want him to hear anyways, because he's going to think that she's really on his side and that it's all legit. And my reaction would be to keep it quiet. So it's kind of makes sense, right? I have message as a cantrip. Yeah. And we're here for a couple of hours. Would it, are you okay with me like just 
doing message to like Zerelia. I don't know what they'll intercept. Does that seem like a thing they could yeah, intercept? Could they? No? Not okay. Really. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> then, Unless you have to speak then, the words for message. Um, oh yes. You do. Yeah, mm. it is oh, like so you have to them. you have to like speak for message. Never mind then. Okay. We'll just whisper it to each other. Yeah, we'll just awesome. whisper it. Um I will like make a show of showing my back to them and just weep a little bit and Oh, that bastard. You're doing really good. Oh. <laughs> Every second he breathes is an affront. Yeah. All right. Um, it seems like he is certainly giving you aid. Go ahead and do your performance for the man at the door. Hmm. 28. Nice. Okay. I'm glad I gave I'm you like, aid that first one Nancy, sucked. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Bleh. <laughs> okay, so... The guy is listening at the door. You kind of step in. You were collected a second ago. As soon as the door kind of closes and he's listening, you start crying so and weeping. You guys are freaking out about the wounds, saying that his existence is an affront. Bastard! Yeah. And you guys now have free reign to pretty much whisper cool. to yourselves as the door closes. Cool. What did he say? Um, what did he do to you? Well, he, Still keeping he, our voices very quiet. Mm -hmm. He yeah. punished me for being too slow to join him and also too slow. <laughs> not being witty enough. Um, he was just a jerk. He wasn't witty. No, he's disgusting. He is a huge jerk, yes. Um, he's very, very powerful, guys. I don't know how we are going to do this, but I told him that when we fight today that I am pretending that I am on your side and that we are going to call on him to fight him. Yeah. Then what? And then we kill him. He yeah. tried. Um <laughs> Is that all? If we have some time couldn't you make some of your poisons? Mushrooms. If we have a couple hours, I could try to make something quick. Any advantage we have would be wonderful at this point. Well, uh, yeah. He... Yeah, I can get to work. Does any, uh, it works better if I have a second pair of hands. Uh, I was gonna say, I was like, I'm like really? Moving, you will? I'm moving away. Oh, yeah, when he says that, I'm moving away behind Baltic. Leo DiCaprio, me, you are zoomed in. You will? We we did good last night feeding your whatever that is. You um, did good. I was a wreck. Yes, I did. Did, um, did he have anything of value on his going out clothing that he typically wears? Anything on his belt, uh, a prized possession, just curious. Did you, did he have anything? You he didn't really look all that deeply at him at the moment, but now that he's bringing it up, you can roll, like, an investigation through your memory in hindsight, so can, investigation at disadvantage. Can I roll as well to see if I remember what Passive he's worn past, like, previously, and maybe give her, like, some... Oh, was it the blue one, or was it to, the... To make it a straight roll? Yeah, just to see if I can... Like, was it the blue? Okay. He wears blue like sometimes, is that how? Investigation in the moment. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Passive then. <laughs> passive? Um. Yeah, sure. What's your What's the passive? Yeah, I guess you're not active. Because uh, yeah, you were around him for 13. a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay, with a 13, you would realize that a great deal of his value rests solely in his corporeal being. Like, he is the locus of all of his power. Uh, and any sword that he carries is kind of just a tool that slightly accentuates an already perfected form. Um, his face is enough to gain him entry into anywhere he wants, though it seems that that locket that he showed to the people at the front door, that seemed to grant him access to some painfully exclusive clubs and things. Uh, okay. Rakdos lockets have a habit of doing that because they're only given to people of a certain rank, though even if he didn't have it on him, they would know who he is and let him through. Um, you unfortunately come to the realization that this is a man who has turned himself into an entirely self-sufficient creature. He has split himself 
from anyone else, from needing to have anyone help him. He is not dependent on a magical weapon. He has no weakness, so no, no thing you can steal to take his power away. He has become powerful in and of himself. Okay. You cannot separate him from his power without separating his head from his shoulders. Okay, we're locking him away. In a coffin. <laughs> when uh, <laughs> so much dirt <laughs> when you're doing your check for the poison thing um, I'm going to come over and have bend luck readied so like bender what is it called bend luck oh bend luck so I can do it after the roll but before any effects occur so does that mean that I can know like what his roll was if I, it's like big I don't have to so cast after it after the roll before the penalties of the roll mhm so, sorry, uh, say that again? Um, what are you trying to do? So, I'm going to have Ben luck ready for when he does his poison. It basically, I, he can roll, I can roll a d4 to apply um, to the, um, the ability check. and So she can decide I to do it after the roll? After the roll. An ability check, though? Not a saving throw? And anything. Ah. Ability check, saving throw, and also attack. So Got she it. can specifically add a d4 to apply uh, that number uh, to a roll, either as a bonus or, neg- or negative as a penalty mm-hmm. to... Yeah, so it's... It's like uh, my reaction. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that could work. Cool. I'll have it ready. When right. you do your poison thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to sit down, take out my tools. Oh, what, do I, what should I work with? What do I have left here? I go through my th- things? No, not you. Nice. You, you're delicious. <laughs> mm. It's poison. <laughs> I believe I have some petrophilium left. Petrophysium. Petrophysium. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. We don't want All right. to petrify civilians. Just going to uh, pop it oh, in, in this mortar and grind it. Going to try to distill it. <laughs> hmm. All right, so it's at a dexterity check with proficiency. Wait, wait. <laughs> You're the daughter, right? Yeah. Are you immune or resistant to anything in particular? Oh, probably. I just don't want to see him make something that your kind doesn't get affected by. As far as petrification, I believe, will affect Uh, any demon. Yeah. Cool. All right. The feces made me think it was poop. I was like, is it poison? You know, poison with bacteria? (laughs) Oh, come on, man. <laughs> it's a natural one. Oh! Am I not lending you aid, though? Yes. I, yes. I rolled twice for advantage. You got a natural one twice? No, I got one of them's a natural oh. one. Oh, okay. Okay. oh, oh the yeah, other one's a four. <laughs> oh, plus, my God. Plus, plus, plus five what? brings it up to plus. a nine. No, no plus. And then I'm going to plus two. So 11. 11. Um, that says you have to do it before you know the result. Yes. No, 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 no. It says she can do it after the roll, but before the effects occur. Mm. Okay. So you know that with your mods, it was a four plus a five, so that takes it to a nine. Wait. You know that he's got a nine? Okay. I can do bardic inspiration after the roll. But before knowing the DC. Yes, so okay. I will wink at him while he's doing this. Cool. You added You've two. You've already prepared, yes. so, so that's, that's taking it to 11. That's D8. Mm-hmm. Yes. D8? Oh, thank God. Right. Thank you, I really need it. All right now. Need some... <laughs> Come I'm on. a little distracted. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not even doing the right voice anymore. Come on. <laughs> That's an eight! Yes! Oh, 19! <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, oh, yes! He's done it! Yes! 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 Oh, function! Master! Yes! yes! He got my Everybody gather around. Yes! Get your goggles on, everybody. We'll work at this. <laughs> he's there. You are just like... You see him going... Oh my god, no. Shaking as he's like, I got it, guys. <laughs> and you go... Whoa. You start popping, fizzling. And all of a sudden, his hands become more stable oh as you kind of take on his body tremors. <laughs> you start jittering. That's two sorcery porn, uh, points burned. Yep. <laughs> 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 uh, that, that's the feces. Cool, eh? <laughs> then, even with the steady hands, yeah. you you realize that he's like so involved with his craft that you're like classic mistake of having his face directly in front of the bottle again. Oh, to see. What's... <laughs> and, He's there, he has the drop, and just as the drop is kind of leaving, you go, hey. And he looks at you, and you give him the wink, and 
<laughs> kind of goes beside his face as he looks at your wing. You nice. have made a vial of petrophysium. Well done. You have the poison, sir. Now. <laughs> okay. Now, how does this work? Do they need the entire dose to have the effect? Do smaller amounts have different incremental effects? Can it be like shattered on him and petrify him? Or does it no. have to be ingested? Petrophysium, if it is kind of taken in the whole vial, if it is ingested, then it has its effect. Okay. Or if it is not ingested, but rather gotten into the bloodstream, uh, then a smaller amount will actually have the same effect as if you had to have them eat or drink the entire vial. So if you coat some amount of it on a blade or, or a piercing weapon of some kind, that would deliver the poison, or if you could trick someone into consuming it. <gasps> I am going to... <laughs> I, don't, I have I an idea. Should okay. be wise enough. Oh, sorry. Her dad's uh, horns. Yeah. Do they point tips forward, or do they point tips back? Hold on a moment. I actually know this. They are tips forward. Cool. Mm. I have an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy, he has a lot of pride. And he thinks quite lowly of me. Yeah? What if we put some of this on my horns? And I challenge him to the equivalent of an arm wrestle or a slap fight or little headbutting publicly, head to head to see if we can damage each other. Sure, uh, whatever you want. You might not be Don't get it on your skin. I'm not, I'm not gonna take the whole thing. How much do we need to coat on a blade or point to do the damage. So if you use half the vial on the one horn tip, half the vial on uh, the other, that would do it. Oh, I don't want to use the whole vial. Yeah. Do it. What if? Do it. It's for you. Well, it's always idea. good for you. What's your idea? Well, <laughs> guy we just she's met. Be <laughs> well, I made that specifically for him. <laughs> on his side, why don't we put it in one of our potion healing bottles and Zarelia can like, give it to her dad in the time of need when he's like, Oh, I'm no, injured. you don't want to put it in a healing potion because then if the person drinks it, it will it will petrify them from the inside. That's what we want from her dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> her dad will be petrified. Alternatively, I was thinking if I only use it on my blade instead of my horn, you stop. could use it, Zerelia, on your blade. When but you switch sides later, later, a strike from you would be the thing he expects least. You could literally get Dang him in his back. I love that she's like quadruple agenting at this yeah. point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just think if we're going to try to get it into his bloodstream, if he trusts story. you and you're planning on going on his side, you could literally stab him in the back. Make a massive performance out of it. That would be rather devastating, I would what imagine. You say? Being petrified publicly by his own daughter. As he believes that you're going that to is... inside. Pretty funny. And the nice thing is we don't even have to do anything after he's petrified. No. We can let him sit while they laugh. Yeah. <laughs> that was, and that then he be... can be the funny yes. entertainment. I do like I'd that. Rather right, give me my powder bag if you're not going to use that. I'll put and some on my blade because I'm the tanky kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I'll give her the... So it'd be half and half for blades. Is that... Uh, yeah. One so could we do that? Each do, do a blade. Okay. I'll do my long sword then, and I'll give you the other half to put on whatever you're gonna put on. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. A couple hours are up. Mm -hmm. If you guys have nothing else to do, yeah. eventually. I will mention about the wager to them as well. I hope. Uh, yes, yeah. But... <laughs> he did say that the only way that he was gonna accept this little challenge is if he could, if you guys can offer him something that could in turn pique the interests of the business people to allow them to put all of their stuff on the line. Because if you guys are like, if we lose, I, nothing happens. Well, I, then you're not going to get a a wager from the yeah. business people. They're not going to back him. And so he's just going to not even accept the challenge. I you have to make it I interesting. I know what I have. I'm good. You know, what? I know what I have to wager. What's that? All of the maps of the city. Oh. Like, I literally, like, we, we run the map store. Well, that would be very helpful to him. Little secret <laughs> hidden. But there's also secret hidden spots as well. Like we, we, like we are really good at finding the hidden spots. So if he loses, 
If well, we why don't we lose. tell him? We don't have to tell him about that. That he has access <laughs> to all of that. That's. <laughs> but we're not going to lose. But we've already said in the. I way. just feel like if he escapes, or we don't finish him, him having the knowledge that that's available to him might not Ooh. be a good idea. He okay. could kill those who make the maps. I don't oh, know if you're attached no. to them or not, but he might go and no. do that. Um, we would not want that. Let's not do that. Okay. Well, then we're part of the myths. Like, we, like having, three pe- having two people that are part of the myths, that should be enough. I would say if you wanted to wager the information of secret hiding places and access panels and things like that, I would suggest you simply let him know that you will tell him, okay. rather than telling him that information is available outside your head. Okay, so this, yes. You agreed that we would join his cause if we lost this private duel against him. Yes. Well, I'm not doing that. Good chance to stab him in the back. And he believed you? I think so. He's a greater fool than I thought. <laughs> he is a fool. Well, I suppose we have nothing to lose but our lives. Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> More than that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So, All right. Are you, you guys going to the first one? What's that? Ready to go into the first one against the monsters and stuff? Yep. Cool. The hours are up. You guys have to sit in this room where they soundproof it as best as they care to so as not to completely spook the entertainment and make them yeah. too terrified to, to stick around, but you can hear that things are not going well. Um, you know that um, there aren't just um, martial contests that happen in blood crypts. Oftentimes there is audience participation. Ah. And sometimes the, there are very expert, sometimes they don't come to see expertly trained warriors, but rather, very finely tuned and honed sadistic torturers do their work. Uh, Augur mages work on people and completely reduce everything that they are. Elves are a particularly um, valuable thing to bring. Uh, The Selesnians, for example, uh, they fetch a very high price, having their loyalty to the World Tree literally drilled out of their mind and replaced with nothing but seething, frothing hate and anger towards every living thing. They kind of find that funny. So you guys hear that until you don't, and it's quiet, and you hear the cleaning up, and then the door opens, and you go, all right, you guys turn to go in, if you'd be so kind as to follow me, yeah? Come on over. (laughs) Walks you out of the waiting room, a gate, (laughs) portcullis opens up, you guys see the inside of a, um, of a blood crypt, which looks like this for the people at home. Life is a show and death its final performance. And you can see that there are quite a few props to help make the performance all the more grand here. And yet, for the amount of blood that passes through this place, between each and every performance, it is spick and span. They clean it right the hell up so that everybody who comes to sit down in the audience can see exactly how much was spilled just for them. You guys are let into the arena, and I'll even show you where you've ended up. Mm-hmm. Like that. Nice. You Ooh. guys can see that? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Oh, what? There you go. Yeah, you got it. Oh, yes. You guys can see. Oh, this is cool. This. Mm-hmm. Is that oh, chairs with a spike on it? Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what they were like looking like before. I go like that. Oh, I'm actually going to go like so. And Judith is there. Yes. <laughs> Jerry. You guys walk through from that northern uh, oh. kind of entrance, step across into the center we're of the blim. blood crypt. Hmm? You. <laughs> Blim the comedic genius. Oh, he's yeah. he's doing other things. Oh. <laughs> he isn't funny enough. He isn't sophisticated enough to okay. perform down here. Um, so you guys walk in. The walls covered in the instruments of these people's trade. Blades, spikes, all kinds of torturous devices kind of lining these walls for 30 feet up 30 until you can feet. see 
yeah, they're 30 foot tall walls where you can see that there are so few people here that the stands are almost pushed forward and tilted mm. so that everyone can kind of look down directly into the pit. And you can see that there is Hewitt, who is watching you guys from on high. There he is, Mr. Hewitt himself. Boo! <laughs> Boo. He gives a little wave to the rest of you. He gives you a little, mm. looks at that. Eh. Gonna flip him off. <laughs> he laughs at you, but he, he waves to, like to Ray. <laughs> then we have Mr. Jury of the Review. He's here. Wow. He's here to watch you. <laughs> is he gonna review us? Uh, no, he's of the Review, which is his own show. Uh, nice. Which is led by like a gore, gore chain or a blood fray giant. Nice. Uh, Judith, the Scourge Diva, she's up and coming. Uh, she's very popular among the Blood Witches now that uh, Marine and Exava are kind of out of the way. And then you have Nyasser. Nyasser. This Nyasser. fine Vyashino who actually owns the Gore House. Uh, he's come down. Nice. You guys step into this area. The portcullis closes. You look at him, and he looks to you, Rake, very expectantly, and he turns his wave into a... beckoning you onwards. We'll hear your proposal when we come back. That's just Ravnica for you. (laughs) So close. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this episode. The next one's gonna be a... We're all gonna die! (laughs) Bye, everybody! (laughs) Thanks so much, though!